In this video, I'll walk you through using Stable Diffusion to craft your first AI-generated image. We'll discuss important settings like sampling, CFG scale, image size, batch count, batch size, seed and output handling. Everything you need to begin your journey into AI text-to-image generation. For help with installing, check out the link in the description. Let's get started. To start Stable Diffusion Web UI, you will need to use your terminal app again. So, open the terminal app and then type and run the command cd Stable Diffusion Web UI to open the folder in which the Stable Diffusion Web UI is located. You can see that you are inside the right folder because it shows up here in the terminal. Now type in the command dot slash webui.sh and hit enter. This will run the Stable Diffusion Web UI locally on your Mac. To access it, you'll need to copy the URL that is given to you in the terminal app, just paste it into your browser and it will open the Stable Diffusion Web UI. Insert a prompt and click on Generate. For instance, you can say Photo of a cute unicorn in a green forest in the style of Japanese anime. You'll see the UI in action and it'll take a few seconds for the picture to appear. There we go, that's a good starting point. To properly end Stable Diffusion Web UI, simply closing your browser window won't do. This is because a virtual environment session is created to run Stable Diffusion Web UI and it continues to consume resources even after you close the browser. To end this session, you'll need to return to your terminal and close it from there. When creating images using Stable Diffusion, the sampling method is the algorithm that it uses to generate images from text. The process starts with a canvas full of noise and gradually removes the noise to match the text prompt. Each iteration is called a sampling step. This is the control that you see here on Stable Diffusion Web UI. With it, you can control how many iterations Stable Diffusion goes through to remove the noise from the initial image. The sampling method determines how the noise is removed and how much noise is removed at each step. There are different sampling methods available, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. Some methods are faster while others produce higher quality or more diverse images. Some samplers are better at generating faces or specific image types. Choosing the right method depends on the task you are trying to accomplish and the desired image resolution. I sorted the sampling methods based on their specific uses. To get the best pictures with clear details, go for DPM++, 2M Karas or UniPC. They make sharp, accurate images that match the given text and training data, giving a realistic look. But they are slow, needing more steps and time. They're also less varied, so results are more predictable. If speed and variety matter more to you, try ancestral samplers. They make quick, diverse and creative images, offering a different visual experience. Yet they sacrifice a bit of accuracy, adding more noise and flaws, resulting in a higher error. The images might not look as good. You can recognize ancestral samplers by the presence of the letter A in each sampling method, such as Euler A or DPM2A. For a balance between quality, speed and variety, go for basic samplers such as Euler or Hone. They give moderate quality, speed and diversity with moderate errors. If you're just starting with Stable Diffusion, use the Euler Sampler. It's the simplest choice, fitting the basics of Stable Diffusion. 
While it provides decent pictures with good speed and variety, it's a foundational pick for learning stable diffusion and how sampling works. The step count depends on the sampling method you have chosen. Ancestral samplers, so samplers that have the addition A in their name, change significantly with more steps. Other sampling methods stay pretty much the same after they reach a certain output, so they don't change so much the more you increase the step count. I would say that a step count between 20 and 40 is a good starting point for beginners. CFG scale or classifier free guidance scale is a setting that decides how much stable diffusion should stick to the instructions you give it in your text prompt. The lower the CFG scale, the more creative stable diffusion gets. The higher the CFG scale, the more stable diffusion will stick to your prompt. But that does not always result in a good image. Usually, the default setting of 7 is good enough, but you can change it if you want. The quality of the generated image based on the CFG scale depends very much on the sampling method you choose. For example, this is how my cat looks with Euler A at CFG scale 1. Somehow Euler A doesn't manage to generate a good image even at 30 steps. This is the other extreme, Euler A with a step count of 30 and CFG scale 30. Again, the image is not at all what I gave in the prompt, nor is it sharp in any way. As a beginner, I recommend staying in the range of 3 to 7 for the CFG scale. But you should experiment with different scales to generate the best image. The size of the image produced by stable diffusion is determined by the image width and height parameters. These are measured in pixels, the smallest units of a digital image. The default image size for stable diffusion is 512 by 512 pixels. For beginners, I suggest sticking to these dimensions, especially for your first image. It'll be quicker than generating a higher resolution one. You can always increase the size in a later iteration or upscale it afterward. Batch count is how many times you run the image generation process. Batch size is the number of images generated each time you run the process. I want to create images of a beautiful Caribbean island. Right now, both counts are set to 1, which is the default. If I raise the batch count to 4, stable diffusion will run 4 times, generating one image each time. When it's done, you'll have five images total. One image combines four pictures, and then you get an individual image for each one generated. Now, let's increase the batch size to two and generate. This means stable diffusion will create two images with each run. Since the batch count is set to 4, it will generate 4 times 2, so 8 images. In the end, you get 8 images plus a bonus image that combines all 8. Remember, increasing batch size needs more GPU memory, while increasing batch count doesn't. So, batch count and batch size matter in stable diffusion. They can affect performance and GPU memory. If you're short on RAM, it's better to raise the batch count rather than the batch size. In machine learning, a seed is a number that guides how random a computer program is. In stable diffusion, it determines how the program transforms a noisy canvas into an image. The default seed is negative 1, making each generated picture different. To get the same picture again, click the green recycling button to lock the seed. For instance, with the prompt photo of a beautiful sunset on the beach, stable diffusion generates a great image. 
clicking the button replaces negative 1 with the actual seed, a numerical value. This lets you recreate an identical image under the same conditions. The seed helps make a new picture with a similar feel to your first one, but with a few changes. Let's say I want to put palm trees in my picture. Stable Diffusion keeps the same colors and lighting but adds the palm trees. To mix up the seed once more, just click the Dice button. When you tick the extra box, it opens an advanced seed menu. These extra seed settings in Stable Diffusion help combine different seeds. For instance, let's say I want to make a picture of a daisy. The first image I generate with Stable Diffusion has lots of daisies and its seed is below it. I'll save that for later. Now I'll make another image with a different seed but using the same conditions. I'm keeping everything the same, the prompt and all the settings, only changing the seed. This time I get a single daisy. I can put the seed of the first image, many daisies, into the seed box and the seed of the second image, single daisy, into the variation seed box. See the variation strength slider. When it's at zero, Stable Diffusion gives an image based on the seed, just like the first image with many daisies. At one, it generates an image based on the variation seed, like the second image with a single daisy. Now, if I slide it towards 0.5, Stable Diffusion blends the seeds, making an image of two daisies. The more I move the slider to the left, the more daisies it adds, similar to the first image. Move it to the right and it's more like the single daisy image. So, if you want to mix two images together, blending the seeds can be really handy. Let's dive into what happens with the images you generate. Stable Diffusion has an autosave function that conveniently stores all your generated images in a dedicated folder. If you followed the download instructions, this folder is located under Home, Stable Diffusion Web UI, Outputs, Text to Image Images. Within this folder, Stable Diffusion automatically organizes your generated images based on the date of creation. If you prefer a different location for this folder, you can modify it in the Stable Diffusion settings. Navigate to the Settings tab and on the first page under Saving Images Grids, you'll find the option Always Save All Generated Images. Unchecking this will disable auto-saving. You can also adjust settings like file endings and naming conventions. In the Paths for Saving section on the second settings page, you can find the default location for auto-saved images. You have the option to input your preferred folder. Another crucial folder is indicated under Directory for Saving Images using the Save button. Remember this folder as I'll explain what happens with the images saved there. Back in the Text to Image tab, let's generate an image. Once generated, it will be auto-saved in the designated folder under Outputs. Clicking on Save triggers another action the same image gets stored in the Logs Images folder accompanied by a CSV file containing all generation settings such as prompt, size, sampler, seed and CFG scale. This extra feature isn't available with Autosave. The Save feature is invaluable as it provides an additional file containing all generation settings. Note that the autosave function can fill up your local storage, so consider cleaning up unwanted images or deactivating autosave. Whether autosave is active or not, you always have the option to save images manually.
The Send to Image to Image button transfers the selected image to the Image to Image section, allowing for further transformations. The same applies to Send to InPaint and Send to Extras, directing the image and prompt to the corresponding sections. The Zip button compresses selected images into a zip file, storing it in the Saved Images folder. Lastly, the Open Folder button directly opens the folder where your images are stored if the autosave function is enabled. On a Mac, it will open Finder to the corresponding folder. By now, you should be familiar with the Generate button. Try right-clicking for the Generate Forever option. It's handy for experimenting with different stable diffusion settings as it keeps generating images continuously, ignoring batch counts. You can tweak settings like sampling method and steps during generation, and stable diffusion will apply them in the next run. This option only makes sense if you have the autosave option on. To stop this, you must right-click on the Generation button again and push Cancel Generate Forever. Stable Diffusion will continue working on the current image and stop after that. During regular image generation, you see two other buttons appear in place of the Generate button. Interrupt will stop processing the image and return whatever results were created so far. If you have autosave on, this option will save the current image. Skip means that you want to stop the generation and discard the current output. Nothing will be saved. I hope you found this brief tutorial on creating images with stable diffusion helpful. Stay tuned for more tips and info on AI image generation and AI in general in my upcoming videos.